Okay, so this is a follow-up to the last video that I did, just so showing you um, what I ended up doing. Um, but then also, I thought while I'm here, I'll show you how I set up uh, this fella here. Oh, wrong mouse. <laughs> this guy here, which is the scene capture um, card. Is it scene capture? Scene capture, scene capture 2D um, asset thing, whatever you call it. Okay, so um, this is uh, the same animation that I had before. So the, the two characters. But this guy is actually in a different room. Uh, and he is being projected, well, kind of projected. He's been uh, transported by the power of scene capture 2D onto this. Uh, it's actually just a card because I wanted to be super quick. Oh, control Z. Um, so if I zoom out of here and then go all the way over here, we the other character hey, is actually in this environment over here. Like that. And then he his uh video is being transported from this camera. And then that's being put onto a texture. And then that texture is, <laughs> is being fed into a material which is being put onto, oh, hello, onto this scene capture card. So I was going to show you quickly, um, <laughs> quickly, yeah, right, uh, how I did that. And so this is so I remember for myself because often, you know, I'll, I'll do this on one shot and I'll go on to, you know, do three or four other shots and then come back and uh, I'll be like, oh, what did I do? So I always write down what I did, but then uh, by demonstrating it, it also helps me to go, oh, what happened there? Oh, hang on, why is that? Okay, uh, so the first thing is I've got uh, all these icons on. Um, if you press G in the viewport, it turns all those off so you can just see everything a bit clearer. And then um, I'm using uh, levels. So you basically put all of your different items. It's just a way of grouping scenes together and elements together. So you can put like, uh, in this case, I've got this environment here in its own level. And so if I go into this, I can hide it and turn it off, things like that, yeah, which is you know great. It's just like an efficiency thing when you, you've got lots of complex scenes going on and stuff. It's just, anyway, blah, I digress. Um, so scene capture 2D. So um, I'm going to quickly <laughs> show you as well uh, the way it quickly hopping between those two locations. I'm using bookmarks, which are brilliant. And so you can add a bookmark for your camera by going into these little three lines and then bookmarks, jump to bookmark or set bookmark. Uh, and there's also hotkeys. So if I press one, basically you have to press in the viewport, make sure that's active first. Um, press one, it'll jump to my first bookmark. Press two, it jumps to my next bookmark. Three, etc. Four. And if you want to create a bookmark, a uh, quick way of doing it is just move your camera to wherever you want. There we go. Say so I want it there. Uh, that's my bookmark. And then press control and then a number five. So control five gets me there. And if I press one there, control uh, number five, I'm back to that. So that's great. So I'm just going to hop over to the other character, which was number two. Um, and then in this scene, I've just turned off icons. I'm going to hit G again for icons. This object here is the scene capture. Where are you? Uh, oh, you're in my persistent level. Okay. Are you in here? Where are you? Where is this thing? Doink, doink. No. Doink, doink. Oh, there he is. Okay. So he's in this environment. Let's close these up, make it a bit e easier. So here he is in here, um, but I'm not going to use this one. In this case, I'm just going to use uh, a new one. So um, I'm going to go into my content browser and I've got an empty folder here and I'm going to cr uh, create a new asset and then I'm going to put it onto a little screen and put it here just so you can kind of see everything together because there's some kind of a weird, not weird things, but <laughs> some uh, oddities that happen with uh, the scene capture, the default one. And that's basically because Unreal is designed to be super fast and to kind of have games in mind <clears throat> as the first kind of start for when you open up these scenes. So they don't want to have things all slowed down for um, cinematics to begin with. Um, so you have to kind of turn some things on to 
to get the fidelity to kind of match uh, the environment. So I'm going to add a scene capture. So I use this little bit button up here and then I'm going to type in scene capture 2D and this will add the little icon. There he is over there. And there's the, the it looks like a camera. Effectively it is. So a way of piloting what that's going to see is if you select right mouse button and then pilot scene capture 2D, then that will be you moving around that camera. And this is roughly what the camera is going to see. It's not quite because it's not you. It's using your current camera setup, field of view and things like that. It's not using the scene capture version, um, but it'll give you the nice position. So I'm going to add him up here like that and say, that's great. And then end piloting by pressing this little eject button. So now I'm back to the camera and then you should see another little, there he is, camera, uh, the scene capture camera up, up there. So the scene capture camera needs, oh, I go to details, it needs a texture target. Oh, it's actually, I should say render target because that is the type of asset you need to create. And the render target, basically I'm just going to put him in here. Uh, if you go to right mouse button, Mm, is it materials? Let's have a look. Uh, texture. Oh, texture. And then render target. I'm going to add that. Okay, so I'm going to add one of those and then give it a name. Oh, oh no, don't click on it. Give it a name F2, is it? Uh, RT for render target. I'm going to call this test. Great name. <clears throat> and then drag that into texture target. Why texture target rather than render target? Okay, and then you can see immediately it's put the image from here onto that text target, which goes into here. And then what you would do is you'd put that, I'm going to do it now, I'm going to add a material, um, just a standard material, MM master material, uh, ren, uh, ren, uh, render target. Okay. So whatever you want to call it. So if I double click on that, it'll open up a material. There we go. And this is a default standard material. I'm going to drag this rend target into the material. And then since this is going to be an emissive, effectively, because it's a monitor, um, I'm just going to put the RGB into the emissive. And because I can't help it, I'm going to put it into the base color too. I don't know why, but I just save that. Oh, sorry. Save that. Okay, so now that material exists and it's feeding that image onto this material and then I'll put this material onto uh, another object. So let's just go and create an object. Just going to add a very simple plane. So going to um, shapes, and add a plane and there it is over there. And then uh, uh, one is a little tip. One quick way of getting this object to somewhere that you're, you know, wherever you're sitting, <laughs> wherever your camera is parked, is if you, because sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll create a model and it'll be like, oh, where, where did I put it? Um, if you select the model, right mouse button, and then snap object to view, it'll put that right at the same position as, as the camera. So if I zoom out a little bit, it's right there in the same position. So it's a really great way of just finding stuff and uh, you know, putting, putting thing. Oh, it's even taking the orientation as well. That's great. Okay. So uh, tip is free. So I'm just going to rotate this camera around. Let's just zero this out. Okay. So here's my, I'm going to pretend this is my monitor and I'm going to drag that material onto it or I can drag it into here. So, I'm going to drag it onto there and let go. And there we go. There's my, there is my camera. So it's projecting this onto that and that gets fitted there, which is going onto here. So, and now if I go back into my sequence, so you'll see that as this animates, it's getting the, uh, it's taking that image, and putting it on here. Now there's some, some things that you'll notice, like the difference is currently it's super low res. It looks like, uh, like a 
90s video game. And then there's no shadows, it's overexposed and things like that. So to change that, we get, the first thing we're going to change is the resolution of the image. So that's based on the render target itself. So if you double click on the render target, at the moment it's trying to put this little image onto that. So I'm going to change the size of it. And I'm, I'm going to pretend it's a 1920 by 1080 monitor. Okay, so zoom out of that. So now it's going to put that image onto here. Save that. Okay, and there it is. Now, at the moment, it's squashed because it's trying to fill that UV tile with the, uh, the, the, the 1920 image. So I'm going to change the aspect ratio of the tile. And a quick way of doing that is I go, rather than 1920, I'll go 1.920 by 1.024, by 1080, sorry, 1080. There we go and then lock that up again. Now when I scale it, it'll be the right aspect ratio. So that's that one. Now next, let's change the exposure. And one, let's, so we go to the scene capture and I'm changing the exposure of that. Um, Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to show you here. There's different projection types. So if you want to do like an orthographic view, you can do that. Or if you want to do perspective, which is the default, you can do that. And then change the field of view here. So there's my field of view. And then let's search for, um, what is it? Exposure. So exposure. So at the moment, this is basically using the default, which is auto exposure so i'm going to turn on metering mode uh, exposure and change this metering mode to manual and then change my exposure compensation but as you can see nothing's happening and um, why is that that is because the default type of capture on this scene card is set to capture source is set to scene color blah, 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 HDR, dynamic range in RGB, inverse opacity in alpha. Uh, and this, I don't technically know what it's doing, but I know that to make it work, I'm going to change it to final color. So final color, high dynamic range in linear working color space. So now that I can actually adjust some of these things and it overrides whatever that basic one is. And so, yeah, um, scene color, I think that was the the scene color, so I guess it's scene. I suppose it's like uh, with cameras, it's like display referred rather than um, whatever the one is, scene referred, uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so again, type exposure, and then now turn on, uh, where are we? Metering mode manual, and then there's your exposure compensation. You can change the, the value of that there which is great uh, now as you can see there's no shadows on it or anything like that so we need to turn on the um, what's the word uh, ray tracing so I'm looking for ray tracing and it's uh, turn on use ray tracing if available so you press that and now oh look at that beautiful and then I'm going to go back to my exposure and then open that up close it up a little bit there we are so now that's looking a, a lot closer to what what we're used to seeing here. One more thing I'm going to do is give it some depth of field. Just going to zoom in a bit and now type in depth of field. And then we go down to lens, camera, oh, no, no, lens, depth of field. So I'm just going to close these up so it's less distracting. So turn on sensor width, squeeze factor, and focal distance so at the moment focal distance is set to infinite so we're going to change this value here and then i'm guessing at this 20 30, 50 okay i mean i can <laughs> i'm going to nudge it with the middle mouse button 
but I don't think it updates. You have to let go of the mouse to, to make it update. Okay, so you can see he's in focus and the background's out of focus. To increase that, change the sensor width. So larger like sensor is more like a, you know, go from a little camera to a bigger camera to a medium format to Hasselblad, whatever. You know, you get more shallow depth of field, more cinematic looking stuff. So anyway, <laughs> this is kind of, it's a little redundant, but um, I'm just showing you how you do it. And then uh, the squeeze factor, if you set that to two, then your bokeh will be more anamorphic looking. And then let's change my focal distance again. Let's bring it forward a bit. Oh, going the other way. See if I can see if I can. Oh, no, it's really. Is there a shift button or something like that? No, it's. Oh, oh, that is a bit better. Is that a control? Uh, just seeing if there's a, a keyboard shortcut that kind of slows down the, the speed that this accelerates at. But let's change that one to. There we go. Okay, so yeah, his hair is nice and sharp. No. <clears throat> Let's go for 85. Ah, oh, 85. Right, there we go. That's it. Nothing. That'll do. <laughs> okay. So if I go back to my sequencer and I scrub this now, then you'll see that he's animating away. And I can move my camera over here. And then you're you're seeing what this camera here sees. And then if I go back to my original scene, press one. So this was the other camera on here, but I'm gonna switch this camera to the, uh, the other one. So if I go into this object, I'll kill that, and then go into, oh, it's this guy here. So he is currently using, well, that's the camera. I don't really need, it's not the camera. I'm gonna change the texture. So where are we? Oh, he is in this level, isn't he? There he is. There's my monitor plane. And then I can just navigate to that asset. Where are all the asset? Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. So there's the monitor screen. And then if I double click, it'll open up. And I could change that image for the other one that I just made. So everything slowed down then. I've got too much open. It's trying to render this and this at the same time. So it's using up more memory. And then with my scene capture demo, so he was render target. Uh, so I can change that one to RT test. There it is. So that if I now hit apply, that image there should change to the other one. And I changed. It's a different aspect ratio, so that's why it looks um, squashed. But um, I'll just put that back. Do that, and then hit apply, save. And there we go. That's it. So, um, what fun. Hooray. Okay. And uh, until next time. And uh, there we go. See ya. Bye.